The United States of America has had its fair share of issues with booze. From the Whiskey Rebellion to Prohibition, alcohol has always played a role in American culture. However, there was once a period of time when Americans drank whiskey like it was water. In today's video, we're going to look back in time to understand what exactly was going on. Let's get right into it. The drinking culture of Americans was established by the pioneers who arrived from Europe. You see, before the American Revolution, there was less availability to industrial make beer and spirits, so drinking habits were a bit different. In the 1700s, the colonists drank alcoholic beverages such as rum, hard apple cider, and fermented peach juice, all of which had been imported from the West Indies or produced from the West Indian molasses. Alcohol became an integral feature of social events such as barbecues, market days, and especially election days, where the passing of jugs or bowls of booze was a staple. Many election candidates distributed complimentary beverages to voters, making it so that a candidate not willing to do so would have a tough time winning. New Englanders especially drank way more than one can imagine. Although in moderation, even the Puritans revered alcohol as a divine substance, dubbing it the good creature of God. But why was there so much booze to begin with? Well, after the federal government started taxing rum in the 1790s, the British stopped trading in American molasses and rum because of the links between the two industries and slavery. Corn was plentiful in the 1800s because of the newly populated Corn Belt in the Midwest. Rather than risk losing money transporting their products across the nation, many farmers found it more economical to turn their maize into whiskey. In response to this oversupply, the price of corn whiskey plummeted, and soon it was cheaper than milk and tea combined. As rum was a premium item subject to high taxes, whiskey was the more accessible of the two. In 1837, Americans drank so much that Englishman Frederick Marriott wrote about how drinks were used for everything from commercial transactions to making up after a quarrel. Whiskey was also utilized medicinally, most notably in the process of sterilizing. In 1830, drinking reached an all-time high of 8.75 gallons of alcohol per person per year. That's 45% higher than the average consumption now in 2022. Over the next few decades, there began a movement to cut back on the country's consumption of alcohol. This era was marked by a widespread enthusiasm for change, just like the anti-slavery and women's rights movements. The effects of alcoholism, sometimes known as dipsomania, were becoming more and more noticeable in society. At this time, if the man of the household started drinking, the women and children in the home were thought to be at risk. There was no safety net to help his family if he became sick or lost his job due to alcoholism. The daily half-pint rum ration for sailors was eliminated by the United States Navy in 1862, and by the end of the 19th century, there was widespread support for prohibition, which banned the production and sale of alcoholic beverages. Notable people such as Al Capone, a criminal leader in Chicago, gained notoriety during this time. The National Archives show, however, provides information on some unsung warriors who battled on the right side of history. So, the next time you believe we live in a drunken culture, keep in mind that the ordinary consumer today would be called a sensible teetotaler by the standards of the late 19th century. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more. We hope to meet you guys again in the next one. Till then, take care.